With the 17th pick of the 2022 MLB Draft, the Philadelphia Phillies select Justin Crawford, an outfielder from Bishop Gorman High School in Las Vegas, Nevada. Justin Crawford's professional baseball journey began in Los Angeles when he was selected 17th overall by the Philadelphia Phillies as part of MLB's 2022 All-Star Week festivities. You might see a familiar face in the crowd. That would be his father, Carl Crawford, who played 15 years in the major leagues and was known for his base stealing abilities. Justin has a lot of those same traits. With 70 grade speed, Justin Crawford flies around the bases, and this athleticism allows him to be an above average defender in center field. Although Justin Crawford likely won't debut in the major leagues until the late 2025 at the earliest, Phillies fans should still be excited about what he can provide to what should be, at that point still, a championship caliber team. Crawford hails out of Las Vegas, Nevada, coming from Bishop Gorman High School, the same school that produced a player of almost an exact opposite mold of Justin Crawford, Joey Gallo. After being drafted, the Phillies sent Crawford to rookie ball, where he was quickly promoted to single A. In 16 games between the two leagues, he posted a 333 on base percentage and also stole 10 bases. That number would be something to keep in note as Crawford's stealing abilities would be put on display early in 2023. Beyond his speed, Crawford has put on a hitting clinic this year, showing why scouts consistently rate his hit tool as a 55 or 60. Playing all of his games with the single-A Clearwater Threshers, Crawford has put up a WRC Plus of 130 and a 392 Woba, which has generated 9.6 weighted runs above average. Although the use of batting average has gone down in recent years as a tool to evaluate a player's hitting success, it is still an important rate stat to consider when you're looking at the bigger picture of player success. Justin Crawford's 341 batting average in the Florida State League ranks first among all qualified hitters. He has an 840 OPS, which ranks 8th in the league, and 100 total bases, which ranks 14th. That's not bad for a leadoff hitter. Based on his current hitting abilities, I wouldn't be shocked to see Justin Crawford make it up to high A Jersey Shore by the time the season ends, and I think it's fairly likely that he starts his 2024 campaign there as well. There is always a chance he could end up at double A by the start of 2024 as well, but that's something to be seen. The Phillies tend to be a little less aggressive when it comes to promoting players. They like to give them time in the minor leagues. And although Crawford has shown that he has the ability to hit at the single A level, it is still a big jump to go from single A or high A to double A, and I don't expect the Phillies to go ahead and rush that development. Although Crawford's hit tool is definitely something to be excited about, it's his speed that really separates him from not only members of his own draft class, but other top prospects in baseball. After all, his father Carl was a 15-year vet who led the league in stolen bases and triples four separate times. Justin projects to fit a similar mold to his father, as a prototypical leadoff hitter that would get on base a lot and also steal bags. At the time of recording this video, Crawford has amassed six triples in the Florida State League, which would rank him third among all qualified hitters. He also has 35 stolen bases and 40 attempts, which also ranks third among qualified hitters, but he has a higher stolen base percentage than the two players ranked above him by a considerable margin. It's evident that Crawford has the blazing speed to swipe a couple bases and turn a routine single into a double, but that speed also translates well onto the defensive side of the ball. Center field is one of the hardest defensive positions to play in baseball, and some might consider it the hardest outside of catcher. That's what makes it so important to have a player who's projected to stay in center field. A lot of times you have players that are projected to either move to one of the corner outfield slots or potentially to something like third base. When you look at the 2023 top prospects in the MLB draft, such as Dylan Cruz or Wyatt Langford, there's a lot of risk that goes into potentially them not sticking in center field. Crawford's able to leverage his above average speed into above average defense, and he also has an above average arm, which really bodes well for his odds to stay in center field in the long term. Although he does have a little bit of development to go on the defensive side of the ball, he is still a plus defender and he has all the tools to go and be an elite defensive center fielder at the next level, along with a lot of offensive prowess to back it up. There are some concerns among scouts about his power. He's graded as below average and frankly, he's projected to be more of a speedster type with not a ton of power. He currently sits at 6'1", 175, so there isn't a ton of bulk on that frame. However, this doesn't worry the Phillies. President of Baseball Operations, Dave Dombrowski, in an interview with MLB.com, noted that he doesn't care if Crawford hits a home run this year. Well, he has one, but that only happened a couple days ago. He said that the most important thing that Crawford can do right now is control the strike zone. And so far, he's done that. 
and his natural progression of growth and development, as he's already put on 15 pounds since last offseason, the power will come naturally. I'm not suggesting Crawford is going to be a 30 homer, 30 steal guy, but I wouldn't be too concerned about his power taking too long to develop as it should come naturally. And frankly, maybe his speed takes a step back, but at the end of the day, he still grades out as a plus runner and someone you should be excited about because his athleticism is really, really powerful. Another concern for scouts is his walk rate. Right now, it's the second lowest among qualified hitters in the Florida State League, which is somewhat concerning. However, his strikeout rate is only 17.4%, which is 11th lowest among qualified hitters in the Florida State League, which goes to show that he has a good grasp of what the strike zone is. Right now, if I was an opposing pitcher, I'd rather attack Crawford and hope I can get an out, since home runs are not a huge factor right now, rather than pitch around him, risk a walk, and then he ends up stealing second, stealing third, and now the winning run or tying run is only 90 feet away. Crawford is a player even non-Philly fans can find themselves rooting for. He's young, likable, a great clubhouse presence, and he has the electrifying stuff that any baseball fan loves to see in a player. I wouldn't be shocked to see him rise up prospect clicks pretty dramatically over these next couple weeks and months leading up to the end of the MLB season. Currently, he's ranked 84th on MLB Pipeline's top 100 prospects at the time of this recording, but I wouldn't be shocked to see that jump up once they reevaluate prospect rankings shortly after the trade deadline. Justin Crawford has the raw tools, athleticism, fielding ability, hitting ability, and speed to be successful at the next level. Whether you're a Phillies fan looking for your next Dynasty Baseball League stash or just excited about the future of Major League Baseball, Justin Crawford is a name that you really should look out for. He's looking to join the likes of Bo Bichette and tons of other baseball players who have followed in the footsteps of their father to have successful Major League careers. And Justin Crawford is looking poised to do just that. Crawford's also up the dish one of my favorite non-baseball highlights of the 2023 season. Just take a listen to the power of Mother Nature. <laughs> 